Okay, so moving forward, the next tab is the color balance tab. Now the color balance tab itself is a very fascinating feature because um, all versions, or I should say most recent versions have this tab here, which is called the master tab. The master tab is very cool. This is what I, really got me excited. I, as a creative, am a very visual creative. I don't like numbers so much as I do just physically playing with the colors <laughs> directly. I like painting, drawing, I like colors. The colors are, you know, what I got into retouching for a lot of the time. And what the master tab does is whenever I move this middle section here and bring it up, do you see the cast that it's having over the image itself? It's adding warmth in that exact color to the overall image. I'm not even, you know, I'm not even trying to figure out what number it is or what curve do I have to pull down to get to that color. It's specific. I can say, I want more yellow. I drag it there. It's done. It's really simple. It's really simple. The other thing that I could do with this master tab, I can even change it to magenta. I can add a magenta cast. I don't even need to know white balance numbers. I don't even know, I don't even need to know what a tint is. I don't need to know how they interact with each other. I can just use this as a, in a sense, a custom white balance. And although it may not be, the reason why this is so impactful is the fact that you can use this specifically um, for raw files. Why is that really important? Well, raw files contain all the data with color, just like exposure with raw files. In exposure, you can rescue highlights and shadows because you have the raw data there. Well, the raw data also works with color information where you have that expansive array of colors where after you bring it in and export it to a PSD or a 16-bit TIFF, you don't have that full dynamic range within the colors as well. So making use of it here is a very important feature. The question that I get asked a lot is, should you modify colors here or in Photoshop? Well, that depends on you know, how certain you are with what you like um, but if you, if you have the ability to do so, um, getting most of the color through Camera Raw is a very powerful feature. But again, I understand you have clients, you have, you know, you want to go back and forth. So um, saving catalogs is a good idea because you can save your settings. But also, um, if you feel like you're going to be retouching a lot, then, you know, it might be better to do in Photoshop. But at least this gives you the option to do it. Uh, a good compromise is once you're done retouching, you can also import the TIFF file into this program and use the color, color balance tool to play with colors as your cherry on top, so to speak. So, you know, it gives you a few options and even though the TIFF is not like the raw file where you have all the data, but you still get the advantage of using this tool and that's the best thing about it, is it, it works with TIFF files. Um, it works with layered TIFF files as well, but when you export it from here as another TIFF, it's gonna flatten it. So Keep that in mind. Now, like I mentioned with this color wheel, you obviously see what's happening. When I move it around, you get a, an, a cast which is very nicely done. You know, it's changing everything in a very specific amount and steps that's very beautiful. I mean, you can't not go wrong with experimenting, right? They have other two features. The two other features in this tab specifically are these two wings. I call them wings because they control saturation and they also control luminosity. Let's say that I want to bring down my saturation. I can bring it down here and it reduces the saturation, not of the image, but of the cast that you applied. So for instance, if I put the full saturation, you see the little dot here goes all the way to yellow, meaning it's adding a full yellow cast over the image. And the other thing, which is really good to notice, is it doesn't look obnoxious. It's not obnoxiously done. It's not just polluting the shadows, not you know decimating the highlights. It's actually retaining a lot of that natural curve and respecting how black the shadows are and how white the highlights are. It's doing a great job. So it's mostly in the midtones, I guess you can say. So it's desaturating that cast that you added. And you know this because that center dot moves back to the middle. If you want to reset it, just double click and it goes back to the middle. The next feature is luminosity. And 
it's blanked out right now because you can't add luminosity overall in this section. But in these sections here, you're going to be able to do it. It's going to unlock it. If you're using, say, Capture One above a certain uh, version, like I believe it was 8, I'm not 100% sure which exact one it was, but you have it sectioned off into other tabs as well. For instance, you can control your shadows, midtones, and highlights separately. So that way you're not doing it all at once. You can add specific casts to each area. It's almost like cinema grading. You get some very cool uh, looks that you can develop with this. Let's say that you want to adjust it where you have a lot of highlights where they're warm. I can bring up the highlight cast here. I can go into my midtones. I can drop it down and add a little bit of coolness overall to my midtones. Maybe some more like, you know, magentas. And then my shadows, I can quickly add some, maybe some, something, something dynamic and different, maybe some blues. And there we go. Let's turn this on and off how we learned previously. Option, and there we go. Let's zoom in here. Option, reset. And you see, just like that, you're able to Come up with a look that's extremely beautiful and very versatile. And it's working with the, with the raw data. So the colors, the transitions, it's, it's all dynamic. It's all gorgeous.